the CEO of Diaspora, PR, Jermaine Sawundu. Uh, would you like to tell us what you think about the president's speech? Were you impressed in any way? Well, yes. Um, I listened to the speech um, on your YouTube channel, TVC News, and um, the speech was quite interesting. It was a very, very long speech. Um, I up to, I think, 31 or 32 points or something like that. And um, he started off um, quite well. The tone of this um, speech was quite different from previous ones here. You heard him saying things like, my dear Nigerians, um, fellow countrymen and women. And that shows that he tried to connect more with the Nigerian populace. And if you even see his body language when he was communicating also, he looked straight into the camera many times, unlike before. That shows he wanted to show a connection um, with Nigerian people. Um, altogether, in those 30-plus um, points that he, that he read out, it was quite good. It basically, it was more like a quote-unquote campaign speech, whereby he just listed all what the government has been doing over the past three years. One would have expected the, to hear more things about um, our, our democracy as a, as a nation and how, how it has evolved over the years and um, what the government is doing to ensure that more democratic values are actually put in place so that the country can actually run best, best. Like the rule of law, ensuring that court orders and other things are upheld. And also, it was quite a very, very interesting speech in that he also mentioned the not too young um, to run um, bill that he's going to sign. I think um, tomorrow or so will mark about um, eight days or so that um, the um, not too young um, campaign has actually said that he's going to, going to give an ultra, ultra, um, ultimatum end. So he tried to address that. And last, he said about the elections, what I say elections. One thing that he said was that he ensures that that, that election is actually going to be, um, I, I'm going to read his words, he said that we're going to have um, credible and violent um, free elections. Nigeria would, be, would have hoped that in his speech he would have said that it will be free and fair, that this AKT elections coming, that they have up to 17 um, um, people, like think governors, going to AKT to go and campaign, and also the 2019 elections, we hope that it's going to be free and fair. But all in all, we in the diaspora, looking at this speech, uh, we believe that it's kind of a good a good speech, a campaign speech, and we hope that the president will actually do and improve on what he has said in that speech. Of course, uh, uh, Jamey, you are a PR person, and of course, so we understand that every word matters to you, and that is why you were able to, you know, to pinpoint some of these uh, mannerisms of the president and, and some words he used in his speech. Uh, uh, so let's look at uh, when he mentioned Boko Haram insurgency. He mentioned kidnapping and then uh, farmers, uh, herdsmen and farmers clashes as well, just in passing. Uh, were you impressed with that or you expected more from him to talk about those decisively, especially uh, the killings in the Middle Belt? Well, um, he, he, he just um, touched on it a bit, um, saying things that um, um, the criminal elements will be brought to justice, also that herdsmen and farmers clashes. That's how we described it. But remember the president in the UK, he said that um, it was actually some Libyan um, people, people that were armed from the Libyan, um, um, people that had um, guns and all those ammunitions from the Libyan um, war, civil war that happened there, and is infiltrating into the country. That means our borders um, are under siege and there are foreign attackers coming. So it's not just about um, headsmen and farmers' clashes that it should have been addressing. This is more about like a terrorist attack tax terrorist invasion um, that had to involve various nations from Libya, Cameroon, um, Niger, all around the, the um, um, sub-Saharan Africa. We are seeing an invasion of people coming to the country and wrecking havoc. And if you look at it from the Fulani headsmen or headsmen clashes, this is it has gone beyond um, 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 clashes. This is now for people are alleging that it's actually ethnic cleanse or people are saying that these people are ba that is banditry. So if the president sees it as farmers headsmen clashes and he doesn't see it as um, attacks by terrorists and people who mean no good for the country then we have to um, question um, maybe that is why he's actually his body language towards um, the, the, this issue is not as aggressive as Nigerians we hope um, it would be. IPOP was um, the executive terrorist group and they were just making noise but this was attacking and it's being described as a farmers and headmen clash. It's more than farmers and headmen clash in my opinion. Uh, now, let's look at um, the, uh, 
uh, DRR program being talked about by the president, uh, saying that IDPs would be, would be given enough attention, a lot has been done for them to provide for them, but we hear different stories from uh, Human Rights Watch uh, and other groups uh, accusing the government and even the military of subjecting these people, uh, talking about IDPs now, to uh, toward uh, b behaviors. And apart from that, the president had mentioned DRR, uh, that's the radicalization, rehabilitation, and reintegration, though it didn't go into it. But if you had followed the news in the country, talked about rehabilitating Boko Haram members and other uh, radicalized people into the society, uh, what would you have to say about that? Well, I, I believe um, that is a good initiative. Um, but what has happened in the IDB camp, as you said, has been atrocious. You know, they've been trying um, so much to help to support um, those people there. But there have been um, allegations of um, people, people in charge of that place actually asking um, for sex or other favors um, before they release some goods to them. And there have been so much allegations of such things happening there. And we have to ensure that that place, that IDP area, has to be safe and secure for people who actually stay there. It's going to be a place of refuge, not a place of abuse. And um, it, it's quite interesting um, what, what the DRR program or DDR program I was talking about is related, is similar to what happened um, in the Niger Delta during the amnesty program, whereby they were actually um, called to give up their weapons and be integrated and trained and all that. And I believe that what the president is trying to do um, to those people in the, who have been engaged and involved in the Boko Haram um, atrocities over the years. And let's hope it should be, it should be successful. So because in the Niger Delta, it was more about develop our, con our, our area, um, give us something to eat. But in the, um, um, in, in the northeast, it's more about religion. It's more about an ideology. And that may be hard to expunge out of people. How do you help make them stop um, changing that um, view? And lastly, what I would like to talk about, which is very, very important, that the president mentioned, was that he spoke about you know, trying to touch, um, I have a soft spot for women. He spoke about the, the tremendous impact that the women are having um, towards national development. You should remember that some of them are in the IDP um, too with their children. But there is one woman that's actually suffering very much, and we should not forget about her, is Rebecca Sharibo, the mother of Leah um, um, Sharibo, the one, the, um, the person who was um, kidnapped in the Dapchi incident, but, all, but has not been released till today. I believe the president has to be strong in ensuring that that is actually resolved. And let's not just bash the president about his speech and all that. He said some very very good things which we must say are very very commendable about the conditional cash transfers that the government has done over 297,000 caregivers trained by over 2,000 um, um, community facilitators and um, people we spoke about also the 5,000 naira that have been given monthly to people and people will say where is that 5,000 naira uh, being distributed I believe the answer to that question is because he said that it's been done in nine pilot states something like, such as Bauchi, Bornu, Ekiti Kwara, Kogi states, which are not really visible to many people when it comes to media attention like Lagos, Kaduna, or Abuja. Maybe because people are not seeing it. And also spoke about um, the loans being given over um, um, 264,000 loans in the government enterprise empowerment programs and the Empower Jobs Creation Scheme. That 200,000 people have actually been empowered and 300,000 more are going to be empowered. So they've been doing a bit and he spoke about that. But in all in all, we hope the president will actually um, sit up and do much more because he has a lot at stake as we know the elections are coming next year. Uh, yes, uh, power generation, let me just throw it to you. Uh, South Africa generates at least 40,000 megawatts, and Nigeria is boasting of uh, 7,500 megawatts. Uh, giant, giant should we celebrate that? Yes. And it's supposed to be the largest economy on the continent. Oh, it is. Eh? Well, uh, it, it's quite... We shouldn't celebrate it, um, but I believe what the government is trying to do is try to um, show a difference between um, their own um, policies in power generation and their results compared um, to the last administration. Um, they were saying that they had the, so like 1,000 megawatts and 3,000 megawatts there, but they've improved it now to 5 point something, and it's now 7.5 or something, um, 1,000 megawatts. So it's quite a lot of figures that they are bandishing around the place. What, what Nigerians want to know is that do they, when they put on their lights, do they see light or do they keep on shouting NEPA or PHC and as the case may be? Where there is light, there is life. 
and talking about the economy to attract more investors. Um, Nigeria, even Lagos, Yaba, they had a lot of bustling entrepreneurs in the IT sector. They need this power mm -hmm. to actually do their business so the Nigerian economy can start beginning to grow and uh, we can now truly be the giant of Africa um, that we are not walking around in blindness but actually having a touch um, of light and leading the way in the African continent showing that we truly are an example of what a great democracy can be and what a nation who has good leadership, good followership and great passion and patriotism for national development should be. And I believe Nigeria will get there. And I'd like to close by saying that the Vice President said something. He said that um, um, we are a people of prophecy. And he said that um, he believes that God has said he's going to build a new Nigeria uh, whereby no matter your tribe or your religion, we shall live together in love and in peace. And I, that's my hope in this Democracy Day, mm -hmm. that we can actually live in love and peace. But apart from God building that new Nigeria, I believe we as Nigerians need to roll up our sleeves and get to work to build um, the new Nigeria of our dream. But it starts with leadership and the followers will go. Um. Thank you very much, Jamin Sawolu, CEO of Diaspora PR uh, on the show. Thank you for coming.